Welcome to Anything Cricket. Let's talk. Our guest today is former Barbados and Holland middle order batsman Emerson Trotman. He's a coach of the Barbados team that recently won the 2020 edition of the West Indies Championship. Emerson Trotman, the successful coach of the Barbados Pride, welcome to Anything Cricket Let's Talk. Yes, thank you very much. And of course, congratulations on winning the championship. Yeah, thank you very much again. I'm very happy and very proud about, about that as well. Yeah, a bit of a... Um, a bit of controversy to start off with one or two voices around the Caribbean um, suggesting that maybe the, um, West, the Cricket West Indies should not have awarded the championship to um, Barbados Pride. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I, I'm, I've got no objection to uh, the uh, awarding it to Barbados Pride at all because of the situation right now. It's quite a serious situation and we were 42 points ahead. 42 points, two points ahead, and then there's no, well, I don't think that we would have been caught. And, um, we were actually looking forward to playing the two games also as well, but you cannot do anything about that. There's nothing that we could have done about that. You know, it's a very serious virus, and I think the decision is a good decision. I would think so, considering that even if you had lost those two games, basically, you may still be able to accumulate, accumulate enough points to, to still stay ahead. I mean, you had a really um, massive lead. I mean, hold it with us as well. I'm welcome in. Yes, and um, hi, Philip. Thank you. And um, to the coach, um, my first opportunity to congratulate you publicly on an outstanding success. But it has taken some time, um, Emmy. Uh, this this Barbados have been basically um, the bridesmaids uh, to the Guyana team uh, over um, the past uh, five seasons or so. So it finally coming together must have given you some great satisfaction. Well, yes, uh, it's given us a lot of satisfaction. It gave me great satisfaction. Uh, the boys have been playing very well. As you, as you said, that uh, we've been coming, you know, second to Guyana too often for all I can and the guys have studied that and the guys have worked hard, you know, and the guys have put all the, all the training, all the plans together and they're executed very well and I'm quite happy that they've succeeded with all the hard work that they've done. So we have, just have to continue. Yeah, what was the difference this year uh, as against some of the previous years in your estimation? But the difference this year is that the improvement and the execution of the two young fast bowlers. I thought they've done extremely well and they set, up, set the tone for Barbados. And then you had um, a nice, good player like um, yeah, young Kyle Mears. He contributed very well. You know, the youngsters have done very well. And you've had senior players like Timar Roach in the side and those guys and Brooks and Carter, those guys, who've been actually getting some good feedback from the youngsters and doing some good work with the youngsters also as well. Some good encouragement. So I'm not surprised that they've done well. And Roach was. was the lead model, and to be honest, the captaincy of Craig Buffett has also been fantastic. When you yes, talk about the captaincy, Wayne, if, if I may jump in here, Wayne, um, you, you mentioned the captaincy of Craig Buffett, and, and this is something we, we, we raised with Craig and with your manager. Um, his captaincy is coming for a lot of criticism over the years. Um, some may feel justifiably so, others may feel a bit too harsh. Uh, what are your thoughts about how his captaincy has developed over the, over the years? Well, it has, it has developed because, you know, obviously when you first come in as captain, you are learning. It's, and Craig is a very intelligent fellow and he learned, he learned quickly. You know, he's been listening well, he's been communicating well, you know, and he's prepared to, uh, to share his thoughts with the youngsters and the other senior players and they listen to them well. So I think that's a real good plus. And Craig has been determined to become a useful, to be, determined to become a good captain. Yes, man, you were about to ask a question. Yes, um, Craig himself, um, in, in discussion with us, uh, Emmy, he had mentioned 
a, a, a crucial factor as far as he's concerned uh, leading to the Barbados performance was the preparation of pitches and the, the, the helpful nature, uh, but the better quality, I should say, the better quality pitches prepared this season. Um, uh, how did you view that? Yes, I fully agree with that because the pitches this year, they has improved tremendously. You know, and that's um, the reason for that, that being, the pitches are being carried a lot more grass, good for batting, good for bowling. So it's been very well competitive between the batted and the bowlers, and that's just our fast bowlers a lot. And of course, it's something you would like to see continued in the future. Yes, I would like to see them continue in the future, yes. Coach, um, the West Indies chief selector, uh, Roger Harper, was recently uh, quoted as expressing the view that he believes that not enough is being done at the territorial level as far as the production of quality players to play for the West Indies test team. And uh, he's of the opinion that the, the, the regional territories should take on more responsibility in that particular role. My question for you is that, is the preparation of our, uh, uh, well, is, how can I put it? Is enough importance given to preparation of players for the first class level. Um, the, the first class level being the foundation of, of all cricket. And uh, do you think that the, the, the territories are guilty of not necessarily putting in enough into the first class preparation? Well, I can only speak for Barbados. I can't speak for the other territories at all. I mean, Barbados have been preparing the players very well. And we actually go almost 11 months a year. And uh, we got a very good coach and staff with Ketan and Oval, and they all work very hard. And uh, we continue throughout the whole year, almost the whole year, as I said, 11 months. And we got all our um, staff in play. We got a fitness trainer. We have an analyst. We got a physio, the manager. We all, all our hands are on deck here in Barbados. And, um, we put in the effort to make sure that the guys work hard. We make sure that they become the fittest team in the Caribbean, which they have, they have proven. So from Barbados' point of view, I've got no complaints at all. So I'm quite happy with the preparation in Barbados. But for the other territories, I can't really say much about the other territories. They're responsible for what they are doing. And philosophically, though, uh, do, do you believe that First class cricket uh, it should be the, the foundation uh, for, for the preparation of players, and the other formats will take care of themselves once you produce that quality cricketer uh, capable of performing at the long version level. Let's put it that way. Well, that is obvious, and all, all the territories should be aware of that. But we have to produce the cricketers for the higher level, and that's, that's our main goal. That's why we try to get at least seven or eight players in the West Indies team every year. So that's, uh, and we'll be quite successful with that over the, over the years. So um, from our side, I can't see that anything that we're doing wrong. The only thing that we have to make sure that our players um, be more consistent as far as producing the runs is concerned. That's um, the area that we are paying a lot more attention to. One of the concerns expressed by the chief selector was that he, was a, he wasn't satisfied that the standards being set um, either by the players or for the players uh, were of, the, were of the, the, the quality that he would want to produce world-class cricketers. So, you know, he was su suggesting that uh, maybe a few players were satisfied just to make the West Indies team, but he wasn't seeing that effort to become the best in the world. Uh, uh, something that we prided ourselves on in the past. What are your thoughts, uh, Coach? Well, I, I believe that the players have to take their own responsibilities. Um, if you're selected for the team, for the West Indies side, you got to make sure that you take the responsibility and be consistent with your performances and your execution. I mean, uh, that's, you just can't sit back and just be happy to be chosen for the West Indies side. You got to carry on from there. You see, and the franchises, you know, it's a, it's a separate stone for them. The franchises work hard, 
as far as I'm aware of, and I know Barbados worked hard, and all players are very, very committed, and they're very eager, and when they met at West Indies side, they're very happy, and they continue to work hard, because whatever they um, learn from the higher level, they bring it back down to help teach the other guys at the franchise as well. So the guys are always ready to go to that other level. Well, you played first class cricket in the region, and I, I, I think I can dare say you were a, a mighty fine uh, cricketer um, in your time when you, when you played. And you played in an era where uh, the, the, the standard of West Indies cricket was of an extremely high standard, actually. Uh, we were the champions of the world, officially and unofficially. Um, how do you compare the, the standards of your era with what you are witnessing today? Well, the standard in, in my era was a, a lot better, in my opinion, because uh, we were just hungry for success. We were dedicated, we were committed, and we wanted to play cricket. You understand? We wanted to play cricket and play the West Indies. Good luck to them. I've never done that. But um, we were, were keen to make sure that we were committed 100% representing your, your countries and Barbados is, you know, you're hungry, you're hungry to do that. So that was actually um, a lot of pride involved in that. Well, yes, and uh, the, 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 the role of a coach uh, was never that prominent again uh, when we look back to, to, to your era uh, when, when you were on the field. Uh, why is it necessary today, uh, in, your, in your, your opinion, that a, a coach become an integral part of, 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 of a cricket team at the regional level? Yeah, the coach is very, very important because obviously the players cannot see themselves. The coach cannot see their faults. That's why you need your coach and you need your analyst. And the coach works close with the analyst. And that's why the, both the coach and analyst relate back to the players and correct their errors and mistakes. Don't forget the coach cannot see everything. That's why you need an analyst. But the coach is very, very important. And um, uh, so, so how, how, how was it that you and your generation um, would have been able to reach the kind of standards that you did without the presence of a coach? Well, in those days you had super players. You had great guys, Sigari Sobers, uh, I didn't play with him really. Simon Nurse and those guys around, who those guys have played to the highest level and they've always been there to assist you. You never have to ask them anything. They're there to help you and they have discussions with you. You sit, you listen to cricket. After the, a game, you sit in the changing room and you discuss cricket for about two or three hours before you go home. But the generation today, the game is finished, 20 minutes later, they're all gone. You see, so um, that's that's the big difference. I believe that um, you can educate yourself as a cricketer. You learn a lot as a cricketer listening to better players, listening to Seymour Nurse and all those guys around you, and you have to pick something up. And we all have done that. So that's, we had to prove and it was a big challenge because there were very little games to play you had about four games so when you get opportunity you had to grab it so you had to make sure that you perform when you lose that position it's hard to get back in mm-hmm. but that was it was very competitive you play the dead my hands all those guys around you can't make no mistakes really mm-hmm. you're going to try and buckle down and perform well tell me something though coach um you talk about the players before, you know, uh, having a long chat after the game and so on. And, and while that may not happen at a local level, certainly where players are staying in the same hotel, there is opportunity for that. But what I really want to ask you, though, do you find that players today are still willing to help each other? Now, it may not happen after the game, granted, but during the course of the game, there are opportunities as well. And are players still willing to help each other, given how competitive the game has become with um, T20 contracts up for grabs and things of that nature? Well, that was a, actually a key to our success as well because you always have players like the same Craig Buffett and T. Mara Rose, Austin Nurse, all those guys, you know, Boston Chit, all those guys that are wrong. They make sure they have good discussions with the youngsters that trying that train to make it, even at net sessions. You see, at net sessions, you allow guys to have discussions with each other, senior players, you know, um, you've, got to, you've got to share the information with those youngsters. And that's what my best players are, all, are, very, are very good at. They're always keen to pass on information where they receive from the top level, they bring it down to the franchise players in Barbados, and they all have discussions. And they're very helpful with that, and I'm very, very proud of that. 
So we, we really can let you go without trying to find out from you um, what plans you've got going forward. You've got a lot of time to think, we all do, okay, um, given the restrictions going on. Um, but I, I would imagine it's going to be a challenge to get to get back into the group, so to speak. Have you been thinking of how you can get those players up and running when the restrictions are lifted? The guys have been training. They've all been issued a program. Fitness program and the guys have been kept busy for that program is concerned. And that program will continue to whenever we are allowed or able to get back onto the field. And then we will continue to work hard from there. But the guys are, are very, very busy at the moment, even during their appraisals and so on. You see, which is very important. We have to do appraisals with the boys for Cricket West Indies, which we are doing at the moment. How does that work, the appraisals? I mean, we know what a prison well, are, but uh, what are the components in terms of um, the layout for this type of a prison, this specific type? Well, this type of a prison is, is actually for the um, for the grading of the franchise contracts. Okay. You see, so each territory have to approve their players. Uh -huh. You know how they um, see the season, how they um, find their performance throughout the season, and just grade them by um, you know um, marks from good or unsatisfactory and, and they, you know, they have input as well they grade they, they have input into the present no they don't grade they grade themselves uh -huh. but then the coaches have to grade them as well okay. if they say it is a four and i think it's the three uh -huh. right the four or three and then that information goes up to cricket west indies okay and they examine that and then they will say all right this guy is good enough for a contract or a B contract or C contract, as long as we um, they are selected, as long as they are selected for a part contract. Okay. All right, Wayne, you got any closing questions? Well, just a quick question. I was going to ask if, if the coach also comes in for appraisal, and then who is responsible for that? The coach is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. The coach is responsible for the appraisal of the no, coach. No, no, no. Uh, uh, do, do the coaches come in for appraisal uh, themselves? And, and who is responsible for appraisal, the appraisal of the coaches, if they do? The cricket West Indies as well. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Coach, thank you for joining us on Anything Cricket. Let's go. Thank you very much. And just stay safe, please. Thank you. Carib Vision is now included in the Once But Media subscription package. It's simple. Search for oncebutmedia.com, then log in, scroll over to the Live TV and Radio tab, and select CVTV from the drop-down menu, and watch the latest in Caribbean culture, news, and sports. It's that simple. Carib Vision is now on Once But Media. Subscribe today. Onespotmedia.com that's our show. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for another episode of Anything Cricket. Let's talk.